Hi guys, how's everyone doing? Welcome, welcome. It's Wednesday, time for some Wednesday wisdom. We're talking health and wellness. As you're coming on live with me today, guys, please let me know who you are if I don't know you already and you're not part of my crew. And uh, let me know where you're calling in from. And also, guys, I'd love you to share this out. Tap the screen for some hearts. If you're loving what you hear, I'd so appreciate it. Um, and for those of you that are new to my scopes, my name is Celia and I'm coming to you live from Baltimore. And let me just move this thing's bothering me on my screen. And uh, I am here as your family empowerment coach to teach you all the tools that you need to refine, to get better at, to talk about, that will help you parent and raise amazing children. Today, though, we're talking about health and wellness. And by the way, guys, I'm here. Hi, Creepy Clown. Welcome to your first day of per Periscope. Is this your first day of Periscope? I feel like you've been on before. But anyway, welcome, welcome. And um, that that's such good news. Creepy Clown, you have been on before. You got blocked. Oh, well, why did it say you were, it said you, it was your first time on Periscope. I knew that wasn't true. So how are you? How's life? How's life in the bathroom? Whatever you're talking about. Anyway, we're talking about health. Health, you have to be a healthy creepy crown. I always get blocked. You change, oh, you change your number six times. Oh, well, don't say stuff that will get you blocked, and then you won't get blocked. There's a simple solution. So six times, yeah, well, you know, don't say things. Oh, oh, because you change your number after creepy clown. You love your job, you're the creepy clown. <laughs> I know, I know, you know it, you freak out children. I, I'm telling you, I think children were really afraid of clowns before, now they're really, really afraid, especially with it. Did you see it? You made candy in the park. <laughs> Did you see the movie It? Because you know it's all about creepy clowns. So um, if you haven't seen it, you should go see it because it's probably educational for you. You know, it's probably like going to college or something if you see the movie It. You know, with Stephen King, who we love so much. Anyway... We're talking about health and wellness, off the creepy clown topic, and onto health and wellness, and the way that you're, and thank you for the hearts, guys, the way that you're raising your kids, because, you know, what the health habits that you put in them today are what they are going to live with tomorrow and down the road, into the future, I mean, I don't mean directly tomorrow, although yes, tomorrow, but in the future. And you really want to look at the way you're living. Are you living healthy? Are you eating well? Are you exercising? So I'm going to ask you guys a bunch of questions. And, you know, you can really think about what you're doing with your life. Because what you're doing, hi Zahani, what you're doing with your life is going to directly transmit... It's going to directly transmit to your children's life, okay? So, had to welcome him to the block party. And, um, sorry, don't go for that kind of stuff. I mean, you can be funny, all of that, that's cool, but not that kind of stuff. You're in the block party. And replay viewers, thank you for joining me. Hey, Samuel, how are you? Thanks for joining. So... I am going to give you guys some questions to think about. Put in the comments, you know, your responses. First of all, do you consider the food you eat as healthy food? One for yes, two for no. Do you consider the food you are eating healthy? And I don't mean you have to eat healthy all the time. Hi, Samuel. A one. Good. That's good. And it doesn't mean you have to like 100% eat every single thing healthy. You're allowed to have a little treat once in a while. But overall, you want to be eating healthy. Thanks for the hearts. I appreciate the hearts so much. 
if you have kids or if you're around kids, if you're an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a caregiver, are you feeding these kids kid food when you make dinner? You know, a lot of people make dinner and they'll make a healthy dinner for them and then they'll feed their kids like hot dogs or grilled cheese or macaroni and cheese and that's all they feed them, which I never quite understood. First of all, it makes you like a short order cook, which nobody wants to be. Second of all, why not get your kids eating healthy right from the beginning, right from the get-go? If you're making a healthy meal, your kids should be eating that meal. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, what about your snacks? You know, people have snacks throughout the day. Your snacks do not have to be potato chips and a candy bar. Your snacks can be leftovers from your meals. They can be meats, they can be um, vegetables, they can be fruits. If you have in your refrigerator, you have like cut up celery, carrots, peaches, grapes, blueberries, whatever is available that's easy to grab, oranges, apples, those kind of things should be your snacks. They're easy to grab. Grab some peanut butter. You know, they even make little peanut butter to go cups where you can dip your celery in peanut butter. They make all kinds of things snack size so you can grab it and go. Buy two dozen eggs and hard boil one dozen eggs. An example of speedy, so here's some speedy, uh, speed, it's hard to say. <laughs> Hi, Ahmed. Speedy snacks. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, speedy, so buy two dozen eggs. Hard boil one dozen, keep them in the fridge because a hard boiled egg is a great snack to grab and go for breakfast or a snack. You can make a, um, a trail mix out of sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and, oh yeah, there's cha-cha. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, um, peanuts, almonds, raisins, craisins, all those things can go into a snack mix that you can put in individual baggies and you can even keep one in your car for you to snack on so that when you're snacking and you're hungry in the car, you don't drive through a fast food place, you grab your trail mix and you snack on that. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, sorry, something's in my eye. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds are things that you should eat every day. They're great for you. Cranberries, great for you. So throw in whatever dried fruit you like. It'll stay in the car. It won't spoil. And you can put it in individual snack bags as well. You know, Ziploc sells a little snack bag, not a sandwich bag. It's like half the size. And you can pre-fill those things so you can grab them and go. Put them in your fridge, carrots, celery, all kinds of stuff so you can grab it and go. Good, Samuel. Um, another thing parents tend to do, they tend to predetermine what their kids are going to like. Thank you, good. Share this out, Samuel, share it out. I love to have more people on board and I'm glad you're, you're liking the topic. Um, you know, kids, parents tend, have you ever seen a parent? I used to have a friend and I cut up a whole bunch of red and green peppers for her son. And the first thing she did was she went like this. And I was like, don't do that because if you do that, he's gonna automatically see that you don't like this and he's not gonna try the food. Don't predetermine what your children will eat or not eat. I used to give a, a cooking class for kids and we had these crunchy roll-ups, which are really fun to make. Get whole grain tortillas, put honey on them, granola, blueberries, you can put seeds on them, whatever you want, throw it in there. You can even put a little applesauce, roll it up and eat it. And because of the granola, I like to call it a crunchy roll up. And you can add anything to it. We used to make these things in class and the kids would make them. Well, the parent looked at what I was making and the first thing she said was, my son will never eat that, but I'll make it for him anyway. And the child was supposed to make it, not the parent. So she makes this thing for her kid who was three. He, she rolls it up, she hands it to him. 
He throws it in the garbage. She goes, see, I knew he wouldn't eat it. And then he goes back. He makes his own roll up and eats the whole thing. I was like, yay for you. I have empowered the three-year-old. Yay, yay, yay. I was so proud of him. And the mother was shocked. But the mistake she made was she predetermined that he wasn't even going to like it. Don't do that. Give your kids a chance to like a variety of foods. Offer them a lot of food. Yeah, isn't that great? It's great. I love seeing that three-year-old. Water. Drink a lot of water. You know that. On my scopes, I always drink water. Because I always drink water. But give your, your child a chance to have two no thank you bites. I always say two no th thank you bites. Because do you ever bite into a new food and it's such an odd taste? Don't we all have to supervise kids for good? Sometimes they're really picky on um, foods. Yes, yes, sometimes they are. But you know what? The more fresh food you offer them, the more new food you offer them, and if you give them the two that no thank you bites, so you let them bite into the food, and even though it may taste funny to them, instead of just automatically them thinking they don't like it, offer them a second bite. Say, you have to take two bites, because a lot of times the second bite, they'll like it. And then they'll be like, that's great. That just happened with my grandson, who is nine years old. Do you guys know what the seaweed sheets are it's dried seaweed and it comes in sheets very good for you so i gave him one and seaweed i gotta admit has an odd flavor so he bit into the seaweed and first he kind of like you could tell yeah yeah it's like sushi seaweeds but it's dried it's a dry it comes packaged for snacking but it's like that it's the same seaweed and it's very good and he tried the first bite and thought it was kind of weird tasting. But then I said, two of them, two of them. And by the second bite, he really liked it. And he ate like eight sheets. And seafood's great, low calorie, incredibly healthy for you. It is a little salty. It is a little salty and a little weird. But I really like it to snack on. Hi, Andre. But the thing was, had he not taken that second bite, I don't think he would have eaten it. Okay, another thing. How many family dinners are you having? Do you know when you cook dinner at home, you normally make it healthier. So you usually have a protein, a grain, and a vegetable. Six. Yay, Samuel. High five on that. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that because, you know, when a family sits down to eat together, there are so many great things that happen. Number one, open up lines of communication. Number two, you naturally eat slower. You don't eat as much food in one sitting because you're breaking up your eating with conversation. And it will naturally give your body a chance to fill. So it's a great way to regulate what you're eating. And when you eat together, you all have the same food. You're chewing healthier, exactly. Chewing longer. You're not just stuffing food in your face and swallowing it. There's more chewing going on, which is very important for digestion. And, you know, and you're talking and you're not eating as much. And guys, when you sit down to a meal, you know, if you have a vegetable and a grain and a protein, in the middle of the table, you can have some slices of oranges or grapes so that people can also have fruit with their meal when they want it. And that's another great thing to put before the meal. If your kids are bugging you about, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, and dinner is just not ready yet, carb, fat, proteins. <laughs> if dinner is just not ready yet, then you can... Put out the fruits, the veggies, some raw veggies, some fresh fruit for them to snack on before they eat. I like to recommend the Mediterranean diet. It's a very healthy way of eating. And basically, it wants you to concentrate on your whole grains, your fruits and your vegetables, and your proteins, your meats, your beans, those kind of things, your proteins 
are well beans are kind of flexible but your proteins your meats your chickens your poultry are less important so basically you're having a fist serving of grains and fruits and vegetables and half a fist and half a fist of the meats and the and the fish and the chicken so that's the mediterranean diet food pyramid you're also allowed to have red wine with your dinner lots of water and all your yes a lot of omega-3 you're you know you're welcome to have fish and a lot of olive oil guys olive oil is great for you and you know what i cook all my eggs in olive oil super delicious Olive oil is just great for you. The Mediterranean diet also includes seeds and nuts. All of that goes into the diet. But just remember your serving size. Fist size for grains, fruits, and vegetables. Half a fist size for your meats and protein. What is a substitute for olive oil? Oh, because you just don't like olive oil. Okay. So you can use... Um, a canola oil. I don't know if you like a sunflower oil. You can use that. Um, there's grape, um, grape, grape seed oil. You can use that. There's, you know, different flavored oils. Try to steer away from, yeah, try those different flavored oils. There, you know, there's a lot out there and it definitely does add taste to your food. So I can definitely understand if you don't like olive oil, but there are definitely other good quality oils out there that you can use. Um, steer away from just slapping butter in a pan or margarine, you know, try not to just use that. Try to use some kind of plant-based oil or nut-based oil. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, because that reminded me of something and now I can't remember what it was. Oh, 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 I don't know if this is what it was. I'm just going to throw it out there. Okay, also, yes, steam foods whenever possible. Steaming is a great way to cook foods. Baking, grilling, if you have a grill, grilling is an excellent way to cook foods. Number one, tastes delicious. Number two, the fats from your meats drain into the grill. And you know what, guys? You can grill everything grilled vegetables are fabulous you can grill corn on the cob my my parents when i was a kid my parents actually redid their whole kitchen and they had a gas grill in their house and it was like one of the first gas grills ever and it was it fed into their gas line and my mother for one year cooked every single thing we ate on a grill and I told her she should have written a cookbook, and she should have. Is corn for kids? Oh, yeah, corn. You can definitely give corn to kids. Absolutely. Don't be surprised when it digests and it comes out in the toilet, but definitely. Yeah, as long as it's cooked soft and they're not really little. You don't want to give it to really little, little kids. But, you know, there's creamed corns. You can mash corn. Corn is great. You can add it into foods like an omelet. So it'll soften it. Um, omelets are great food because you can add all kinds of vegetables and, um, and you know, um, blah, 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 blah. You know, lean meats, popcorns. Popcorn you have to be really careful with with little kids. So that's different. Popcorn, you know, number one, if you have little, little kids eating popcorn, make sure they're only eating the entire popped kernel ones that are big and fully popped and remove the little corn the little corn kernels that are not popped you don't want them getting into their choking on it i would just remove it from the bowl the best thing to do is take the fully popped corn cor fully popped kernels and put them into another bowl just get them away from whatever you poured the popcorn bag out into Pour it out and take out the other corn kernels and put them into a bowl for them to eat. So there's no chance of them getting the uncooked kernels. You got to be really careful. 
But kids, even kids that are like three or two that have all their teeth and chew well, they can eat a fully popped popcorn kernel. Hot dogs is another thing. If you're feeding a hot dog or grape, I always recommend you cutting them into small slices. I cut all my grapes in half before giving them to my grandchildren. It's just easier. You don't have to worry about them not being able to bite into it well and swallowing a whole grape. It's already cut into, so it's much easier to chew. So beware of that. When things are small and circular and they look like they can fit into a windpipe, they can fit into a windpipe. I have seven grandchildren, Samuel. Can you believe it? Seven. I'm actually at my daughter's house, which is why I don't have my little normal screen. And I sleep here on Wednesday nights and I take care of her two children on, on Thursdays. And my other two grandkids live with me for about another month and then they'll be moving. But um, yes, I'm very lucky, very fortunate. I have five children, two of my own and three I gained through marriage. And out of those five kids, I have seven wonderful grandchildren. So very blessed. I love kids. I love kids. Um, oh, another great way to teach your kids healthy habits. Yes, thank you, Samuel. Another great way to teach your kids healthy habits is to take them food shopping with you and teach them about the food store, how the healthy food is on the perimeter of the store. Teach them food labels and the information that's on food labels, the calories, the fats, the sodium, the sugars, all those things that you wanna look out for when purchasing food. It's a great time for education. And here's another fun way to get your kids to eat more fruits or vegetables. When you go to the food store, have them pick a color of the day. And it could be yellow, orange, green, purple, whatever color they want. And have them choose one fruit or one vegetable or both in that color that they've never had before. And let them try it and see if they like it. And it's a fun way to get them to choose new foods. Water. Hi, Ash Aksahin. Welcome, welcome. How much water are you drinking? Are you drinking a lot of water? Are you feeding your kids juices or soda instead of water? I'll give you a great thing that you can replace soda with. You can make a spritzer. So you buy club soda or seltzer or sparkling water. And in a glass, we'll use this glass. You actually put about this much 100% juice in it. And then fill it the rest of the way with seltzer or sparkling water. So you're using about a third of 100% juice to the rest, sparkling water or seltzer or club soda. And it makes a delicious soda. So if your kids are drinking soda and you want to get them out of that habit, make a fruit seltzer. It's great. And then put some fresh fruit in it and it's a party. With a little umbrella, you have a party. Okay. What else did we talk about? Oh, sweets. Guys, how much sweets are your kids eating? You know, there are like so many hidden sugars in foods. And what you might not think is a sweet is a sweet. So really check the sugar content. You know, the healthiest sugar, guys, actually is stevia. Stevia is the only actual plant-based sweetener. There are better grades of stevia. So stevia is, you know, kind of, yeah. Stevia's, it, they are. <laughs> if stevia's like kind of too sweet, too uh, strong in aftertaste, use a little less or get a better grade of it. Better grades of stevia don't have as strong an aftertaste. Sugars, you can use maple syrups, things that are natural like that or raw, like honeys. Um, great. Those are good things. But be careful of the artificial sweeteners and uh, white sugar. Cut white sugar out of you. Hi, XOXO for you. How are you? Is that kiss and hugs? Thank you for joining me. Yeah, cut those white sugars out of there. Yes, get rid of that. Um, fructose is a, um, a fruit sugar. It's a sugar from fruit. So it's a little better. 
Um, but really try to use your natural sweeteners like stevia, maples, honey, those kind of sweeteners that you can add. Or try not sweetening at all. You know, when you over-sweeten things, you get adjusted to all that sweet stuff in your, in your mouth, don't you? And then you want more sweet stuff. So, you know, stuff does not have to be sweet. I don't sweeten anything. I, there's not much I sweeten. How about honey? Honey is great for you. And, you know, there's this thing called bee propolis. And bee propolis is really raw honey that's not filtered or anything. Although it tends to be bitter and it tends to be turmeric is good for you too. Very good for you. Has a lot of benefits. It tends to be, uh, bee propolis tends to be kind of bittersweet. So you may have to add it to things. It is, bee propolis is an expense. It is, it is. It's like for maybe a six ounce jar like this, it's like $12. It's not outrageous, but it's very, very good for you. Where did I put my water? It's very good for you and very healthy. And it has a lot of properties to keep you healthy. I will tell you, I add it to my um, my smoothies. I add it to my smoothies. So, um, but honey is fine to use. It's great in teas if you drink like green teas. You know, it's great to add to teas if your your kids are feeling a little, you know, under the weather. There's no reason they can't have tea. You oh sorry, shook you up there. There's no reason you can't ha they can't have teas. A lot of people don't think of giving children teas, but as long as they're decaffeinated, they're great. All right. Um, what is the other thing I wanted to talk? Oh, so we said no white sugar, no white flour, go with whole grain. So what a whole grain is, guys, is the grain itself is encased in the shell. I do all my groceries, food for less or Satter Brothers. So I really need to help cheap it. Yeah, well, you know, it's fine. You can still buy healthy food inexpensive. Do you have an Aldi's near you? A-L-D-I. Aldi's. Do I have a pen to write that down? No, I don't have a pen. Do you have an Aldi's near you? Because that's a great food store. And their food is very reasonable. And they have a lot. Is it in California? I would think it's in California. Maybe not. I don't know. It's A-L-D-I. Um, it's a lot like Trader Joe's, but even less expensive. And uh, there's some family relation there. I don't know what is in my eye, but it's making me crazy. Anyway, um, but if you have an Aldi's, it's a great place to shop for anyone that has one near you. It's very reasonable. They have lots of organic foods, lots of gluten-free foods, and lots of just great choices for, you know, cost-effective shopping. Um, cut the fats as much as possible. Cut the salt. Try not to over-salt foods. You know, when you over-sweeten foods and you over-salt foods, then you want salt and sweeteners on everything. I have very bland food, but to me it's not bland because I can actually taste the food itself because food does have flavor. Now, if you're going to season, use seasonings that are natural seasonings. You can use your turmeric. You can use your garlic. You can use um, the Mrs. Dash salt-free seasonings. You can use peppers, things like that. Do you know that black pepper is a natural appetite suppressant? As is cinnamon. Two natural appetite suppressants that you can add to your food. Um, okay. What else? Are we, oh, and exercise, guys. What are you doing for exercise? Don't forget that keeping a healthy body, keeping a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit includes exercise. Exercise whenever you can. Take the family out to the park. Go for walks after dinner. Climb your steps if you have to be inside. Oh, you smoke cigarettes. Okay, so that's okay, Samuel. You know, it's a habit you can break. So try, if you want to break smoking cigarettes, Work on breaking it. You don't have to apologize. We all have our habits. We all have our things that we wish we didn't have, but we have them. No need to apologize. I will ask, though, if you have kids, do not smoke around the kids. 
go outside because secondhand cigarette smoke they have proven is just as bad as them smoking directly. So please don't smoke around children. Um, but, you know, we all have habits that we either would like not to have, but we have them. So we all can work on changing it. Because, you know, we're all human. Are we not all human? We are all human. Which is what's nice about the Mediterranean diet, too, guys, because it actually allows you to have a glass of red wine with dinner. Personally, I don't drink. My husband loves red wine. I don't drink anything, really. Not my thing. But it allows you, if you like wine, to have a glass of wine with dinner every night. And that's perfectly okay and perfectly on the diet. Because... Red wine is very good for your heart. It has that resorbitol in it that really super good for your heart. Okay. So exercise a lot. And another important health habit is getting good sleep. So we've got healthy eating. <coughs> excuse me. Hydration with water. Exercise and getting good sleep. So make sure... Your sleep is good. If you're sleeping a long time and you're waking up a lot at night, then condense your sleep. Go to bed later. Make sure you teach your children and you have a fixed go-to-bed time and a fixed wake-up time. And do it every day of the week. Don't say, oh, it's the weekend so I can sleep late. It will mess up your sleep patterns for the week. I'm telling you, if you stay consistent... And you go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time, give or take a half hour, you will sleep much better. And if you wake up a lot at night and find yourself not going back to sleep, then lessen your sleep time. Cut it off. You work night shift twice a month. That's hard. I know. You know, Sam, my husband works a lot of varied shifts. Sometimes he's two in the afternoon to ten. Sometimes he's six in the morning to six at night. Sometimes he's six at night to six in the morning. Luckily, he hasn't had too many night shifts. But I know that can really throw you off for sleep patterns. So I know it's difficult. I actually don't even know how, like, doctors and nurses do all that, like, frequently. Like, I have a friend. My daughter has a friend who's a nurse. And she is sometimes at night, sometimes day. And she flip-flops so much. I, I don't even know how you can do that. But I guess you get used to it like you get used to anything. What do you do, Sam, that you sleep, that you do night shifts? Back to my water. Look, I'm running low. Which will mean I'll have to end my scope soon. Yeah, I have to end it soon because I'm running low. All right. I don't know if I missed <clears throat> any points. Oh, and I guess the last thing is, guys, as you're shopping... Let your kids shop with you. Let them cook with you. You know, kids are much more likely to eat what they cook. So let them have a part of it. They'll love it. You get a hand, let them clean up. They can clean up too. Really bring them into the part of a working family. So they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're helping out with the household chores. They're taking walks, you're exercising together, you're doing fun things together play tag in the backyard, run around, play ball, drink lots of water, and get a good night's sleep. And that's my advice for you today, guys. I really am honored that you guys spent the time and your busy schedules to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. I'm here Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock, and I'm on Facebook Monday through Wednesday at 2 in the afternoon. So if you need afternoon, I'm there. If you need nighttime here, you are so welcome. If you would like me to connect with you, by all means, put your email down and we can even do some more work or I can answer any questions you have and I can follow up with your email. You can type it in the comments and I'll get it and I can follow up in the email. Also, if you're a parent or a caretaker or anything, thank you, Samuel. I'm so glad you're here and I love having you at my, with my show. Um... If you're on Facebook, join Landmark Parenting. I've got a lot of great new things coming up in the next couple months. I'd love you to be on board with it. Landmark Parenting. And in the meantime, Samuel and everyone else that's here watching, I wish you peace, love, and tons and tons of laughter. After all, laughter is the best medicine. It's great for your facial muscles, 
great for your abs, great for your lungs. It's great all around. So have fun with your kids. Enjoy them. Have fun with each other. And I'll see you here tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.